we'd like to give a special thank you to PicoSupply.com for sponsoring our podcast. Welcome to the Homestead Podcast. You are joining co-hosts Carol and Jamie of TwoGalsHomesteading.com. If you found yourself here, that means you are ready to take responsibility for what you eat, your family's health, and your family's well-being while living a simpler life. You can do this and have fun, saving money along the way. Let them help you unleash the homesteader within. By doing more with less, you will gain what is needed to create confidence, impact, and change in your life and the lives around you. Let's start homesteading, let's start now. Hi, Jamie. Hey, Carol. And how are you today? I'm good. 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 I'm doing okay. Surviving. Surviving, yes, (laughs) yes. For those of you who don't know, I spent a couple of nights in the hospital about... What, three weeks ago? Yeah. Maybe about three weeks ago. Hence why we haven't put up a podcast. Yes, why we haven't podcasted for a while. Um, and I'm doing much better. I'm still still recovering to a point. Inner energy levels, yes. not what it used to be. Yes. Um, let's see. What else has happened since we uh, we uh, last recorded? Let's see. We've had our first snow. Yep. It has snowed here. That is gone. <laughs> it melted. It, which happens quite often yeah. in Minnesota. We, it snows and goes it's, away. It snows let's and see, goes what away. was it, right? Two days before Thanksgiving. Or Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Halloween. Was it? Was it? Was it? Or is uh, it the day before Halloween? I just know all the kids are cold. Yes, it was very we cold. We probably only had Halloween. half of the trick-or-treaters that we normally do. Right, right. It was It was quite It was quite cold. Yeah. Or um, it has froze, and so you have already put your garden to yep. rest. My garden is cleaned out. Yep. Let's not talk about my flower beds, but my garden is. Your garden is taken care of, and um, you've also planted garlic. I planted the garlic. We put a video up, or I tried to put a video up on <laughs> Our page on our Facebook page, yeah. um, about how you did that. Yes, and boy, those were some big. Those were some cloves. huge. Oh my goodness! Yeah, they were probably like three cloves, normal cloves size, and I'm like going. They, so they weren't like I know there's like elephant garlic or something. yeah no that it was called hardy German German something, and they were supposed to be good. They're hard neck, mm-hmm. long storing, mm-hmm. and so that's what I bought, and mm-hmm. I bought five bulbs thinking. That, that would be plenty. That would be plenty. <laughs> but then, you know, if I get that big of cloves, yeah, it It'll probably will be enough it. because where I would use three cloves, I'll use one. Mm-hmm. And now that I have my drip irrigation kind of figured out, yeah, good odds. And you got your garlic from? Am I Gardener? Dot com. Am, am I Gardener? He's is he in Michigan? Is Michigan. That what, am, yep. Am I okay. Um, they have a seed company out there, and all of his seeds packets. Most of them, I won't say all of them, most of them are $2. And then shipping's really cheap. Now, if you order $50, I think it's free shipping, okay. but it takes a lot of $2 packets to add up to Yeah, I would guess so. So do you get all your seats from there? Um, no, I have a couple times. No, one time I ordered from him last year and I ordered the garlic this year. Um, I just, you know, he's small business and so I'm a small okay. business. So yep. wanted to... Sense. You know, he's, he's, I've watched him for years on YouTube. Okay. And I'm like going, okay, how does a young, such a young guy know so much about gardening so many? <laughs> I know I see, I belong to his Facebook page. Yeah. And so I do see his posts and he's quite active. Yeah. He's Facebook, got good so. information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned a lot from him. I've been gardening for years, but I think I've, in the last maybe 10 years, I've started, started honing it in because you could readily get more information than just having to sit down and read a book. Because mm-hmm. Always reading a gardening book is not always exciting. What? It's not thrilling? No. I enjoy it. It's information, but it's like reading an encyclopedia. It's like I yeah. go in and look for information and then I put it down. Okay. I yeah. don't read it. It's not, not a, novel. Like a novel. It's not a novel to me. Okay. You plant the garlic in the I, fall because? Because it needs so many days. It's like a hundred and some odd days that it needs. And so it'll start growing now. Okay. And then it'll go dormant. It needs a cold period, I think, too. Okay. And then so, and then once it starts warming up, it will start growing again. And and, did, and you covered it. You mulched it. And all I that mulched stuff, right? it with. I did not have that in the video. I put. Um, I had bought some chopped up straw from Menards. Mm. It's in a bale. Mm-hmm. Made it really convenient. And I mulched that after I shut the camera off and went. Darn. <laughs> you know this video thingy. I'm still learning. Mm-hmm like oh or you know okay you know taking so now you just let it be let it be just gonna let it yeah let it sit did you did you water it at all after you um well it rained a couple days i had intentions if it did not rain i was gonna go water it okay 
but so I did not have to water it. And I usually don't, in our area, we get enough moisture with snow and everything that I don't have to. Okay. But if you're in a dry area, you know, someplace that doesn't get much rain or snowfall, I would go out every couple of weeks and make sure that the soil is moist, just like you would in the summertime. Okay. You know? Okay. So that's probably covers about garden stuff. Yeah. Because it was pretty much done. We also tested out the whirly pot. Oh, yes. Not last week, the week before. Four. The week when I come out of the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that is quite the nifty device. I was totally surprised. I had used something like that um, when I would camp with a church group, mm-hmm. you know, when I was one of the leaders and stuff. And I was like, oh, you know, why are we looking into this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because it was it was kind of tedious to do that, to sit there and whirl it. I mean, uh-huh. it took five minutes or so. But this did not. No, it didn't. We uh, we got the Whirly Pop, um, the stainless steel model. It comes with the theater popcorn yes. kit. And so all we did was... You cut it open? Yep, you cut it open, dump it all into the cold pot. Yep. And you put it on the heat and you just stir, stir it. Stir it. And um, once it started popping, I don't know if it even took a minute. Yeah, I was surprised when you stopped. Yep. I was like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I can't move the I can't move the whirly, whirly anymore. Yeah. <laughs> And, Which I yeah. don't think was more than three minutes popping, if it was three minutes popping. It probably wasn't. So, yeah. And it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, it, it tasted like theater popcorn without the grease. And, and it wasn't ex- obnoxiously salty. Yes, it was, it was, it was really quite good. Um, and now I have, I have popped popcorn again because I was intending on making caramel, caramel corn, corn with it. But then I wasn't feeling so good. And so um, we just kind of ate that popcorn with just some butter and salt on it. it I got the same results. It took, it took about five minutes for me to um, use, um, get it from cold pan to popped. I used coconut oil. Okay. And I will say that the popcorn tasted different to me, just a little bit different. And I don't know if it's because I'm so used to eating air popcorn. Oh. Which has no flavoring whatsoever. Yeah. You know, and then since I use the, um, I just use coconut oil I have here for cooking yeah. anyway. And yeah. yeah, I use it in other things. But but it turned out good. It, I mean, I just can't believe how fast it pops. And we counted the leftover kernels at the oh, bottom. that's right. We, we had three. Three or five. Three or four. Yeah. I, something. Yeah, something like that. I mean, out of, I'm sure there's probably a third of a cup or a quarter of a cup. Uh, it's... It, yeah. I used a half a cup when I made okay. it. It was a half a cup in up to three tablespoons of oil is what was supposed okay. to go in there. And yeah, it makes it makes about six quarts. There's actually oh. six quarts of pop. I know. I was like, I told her, really? I, don't, I don't believe that yeah. holds six quarts. But when I made it myself. You measured and, it? Yep. I measured it. And yep, I had six quarts of popcorn because I need That's six, a lot of popcorn. I need six, six quarts, quarts of popcorn to do my caramel oh. corn. Oh. And so I was like, I might have to make a second pot. No, I would not have to do that. Oh, because see, I so. love caramel corn. I just don't ever make it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I'm, I'm going to get there. You'll I'll get, get there. there. Yeah. I'll get there. Um, but yeah, I was very impressed with that. Um, and you can find the Whirly Pop popcorn poppers at whirlypopshop.com, I believe. Yeah, they're not so simple anymore. No. You got, you got shop and stuff in there. Yeah, there's, there's, I, th- I think it's at that. I believe that's what it is. And they're really reasonably priced. Yeah, for a stainless steel. And what was it? 55, 55 57. Yeah, I think it was under $60. Yeah, it was under like, 60 And clean up. Oh my gosh, you guys. So easy. Literally, I, I wiped. I wiped it out first just to get rid of some the, of the oil, especially from the um, the theater for stuff. the theater stuff. I wiped that off, and then I just washed it. It just wiped clean. It really did. I mean, I just washed oh. it with soap and water. No scrubbing. No. No scrubbing. It nothing burnt. It yeah. was uh, as long as you're attentive and paying yep. attention and yep. didn't burn anything. Yeah. Yeah. It, it so it clean up was was easy peasy. So um, I'd highly recommend them, and we'll probably making popcorn here now with going into winter our holiday seasons christmas and stuff um oh we'll be, popcorn you know at our house yeah we go through lots of popcorn in our yep, house too we use, we use a lot of popcorn and they sell popcorn too oh, and yeah. all the seasonings and all the flavorings and yeah um, things that you like, might have to just put a little little list together and and place an order here and get some of the their little fancy seasonings like their dill pickle and all oh yeah fun ones. that would yeah. be i like dill pickle. i know so do i i've never had it with popcorn though <laughs> Yeah, I like dill pickled potato chips, but I think you and I are the only ones our yeah, husbands yeah, like. Yeah, they're like, nah. you, you guys are insane. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Well, uh-huh. anyway, so that was that was our Whirly Pop, and um, we are very very pleased with it, and highly recommend it um, yep. if you're if you're a popcorn lover like we are. The other thing we did, and this happened last week, yeah, is you did meatballs in mm-hmm. our U pan. Yes, um, and it was I was. Um, Rich asked me, did you cook that on top of the stove? And I'm like, no, I put it in the oven. I'm like going, I'd have to sit in putts with it if it was on the stove. <laughs> I'm a lazy cook. Okay. So like turning, did you turn them at all? I did turn them midway, okay. 10 minutes. I think, oh, see, I don't have the recipe in front. I think I did 30 minutes total. It was 25 or 30 minutes, but about midway I turned them and they, it's like, I was afraid they would stick, but mm-hmm. I made sure that I oiled the pan. Okay. Beforehand. Um, yeah, because you used the beef, you used some beef that was fairly lean. Yes. Right? That's yes. the beef you Actually, got I used our, the yeah. beef that I got from you, yep. so it was lean. Um, and so I oiled it, and that's what I was concerned about, you know. And it, it was just, a, you know, it was a recipe. I could have swore that you had put it on your um, recipe spot that mm-hmm. you save your recipes. I could not find it. And I went, I thought, well, I'll just do a search for, it was a meat, it's called Meatball Boats. And, you know, it was meatballs on a hoagie sandwich. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many recipes popped up? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there's pages. Mm-hmm. And so this must, I'd never heard of it. I've heard of meatball sub, but not a boat. Mm-hmm. And so I just used that recipe. I had saved it to my app that I use for my recipe and meal planning. And I thought, well, I'll just make these. And they turned out so good. Yes, they were really good. And I do believe that recipe is posted on our website. Okay. And, and there's video. Oh, and the video. Yes. Okay. So um, you can check that out. And yes, those meatballs were delicious. And I had, we just made them. And then um, you had gravy. Yep. I had brought and gravy. And we had rice and mashed potatoes. And, and um, I had, had bar- some barbecue, barbecue sauce. sauce. And I bet they'd really good with the sweet and sour sauce. Yes. You know, I mean, they were quite a, I think a oh, versatile meatball. Yes. I mean, I was, I, I left him plain because I know my husband would do the gravy. He wouldn't do the sweet and sour and he wouldn't do barbecue mm-hmm. sauce. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and yeah, he's not so a big, kinda... he's not a big gravy guy either, but he will eat gravy. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was just kind of, it was a really nice versatile meatball. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. They were really good. And um, worked really well in the, in the U-pan. U-pan. Yeah. To put that, you know, 20 minutes in the oven, 25 minutes, 30 at max. You know, the tricky part was like, okay, how am I going to transport those out here? <laughs> Yeah, so then you put them in your slow cooker. Yeah, then I put them in my 9 by 13 slow cooker pan to bring them out mm-hmm. because that has a latching lid. <laughs> oh, they were really, really good. Um, so meatballs in the U-pan works pretty good. Yep. Yep. Trying to trying to come up with ideas to use it. So, well, we're going to keep looking and see yep. if we can find some more things to do because we do jalapeno poppers in them. Yep. And I've done sausage and hot dogs. That's and one thing I haven't. I thought about. I haven't done sausages in it. You, didn't you just buy some bratwurst you were saying, or Polish sausage? Yeah, but that I, would probably work pretty good. Yeah, I did them in the toaster oven. That's my go-to, and so I. And then I, you don't. You don't always think. Yeah. You know. Oh, I should try it in this. Yeah. Or whatever, because you're so used to doing it this yeah. way. Yeah. You know, or whatever. So. So um, I'll probably next time. You know, that'll be on the menu in a couple of weeks again. Okay. So. All right. So let's move on. Okay. So our gardens. Our gardens, like I had really had one, I didn't. Um, you your tried, garden is you resting. tried. <laughs> your garden is resting. Yeah, my pigs kind of got into my well, my the bugs. Pots you and, had yeah. grasshoppers. Oh, grasshoppers took care of my tomato plants pretty good. Um, but anyway, so the gardens are resting, yep. and so now because you were very busy when your tomatoes were coming in, yeah, you froze a bunch of them to process later. Yeah, that's what you've been working on this past week. Yes, I um, as we speak, I have spaghetti sauce in the slow cooker to be canned tonight. Um, but I had done spaghetti, not spaghetti, so I'd done tomato sauce. I mean, I don't use tomato sauce a whole lot. Um, and so I just did, I think I did 14 pints. Okay. No, not even pints, jelly jars. What are those? Those eight those ounces. Half pints. Eight yeah. ounces. Yep. Yeah. That's that one cup. Yeah. So that's what I'd done. Yeah. And so you just take them out of the freezer, let them defrost, and then tomato, you know, tomato sauce is easy. I just let them defrost, throw them in the Vitamix, blended them up, and warmed them up and then put them in jars and canned them. So did you chop them previously or did you Yes, before did you put I, them whole in the No, because okay. they take up so much space okay. in the bag. Um so and to core them. So I wash them, core them and then cut them, core, quarter and them. You don't peel them. I don't peel them. Well, nope. No, I don't either. Nope. So the Vitamix takes care of all that for me. Okay, cuz somebody told me if you freeze them whole, you know, core them, yep. freeze them whole and then you thaw them out, the skins will come right yep, off. Yep, they will come okay. right off. The only thing is it takes you don't get as many in the bag. 
Yep. And yeah, so, so that's where you, yeah, my, my your... purpose is and knowing that I'm not going to do that. My purpose is to get as many in that bag so that I can get done with the job and move on. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And the Vitamix does a really good job yeah. of getting rid of the skin yeah, like going, and seeds. What, what did does. I, yeah, <laughs> you can tell gone. they're there a little bit, but yeah. you don't taste them or right. feel them. Right. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's move on. Okay. Now we're going to talk about pumpkin. That's our main topic for today. Yes. And so we were blessed or well, we were blessed. Both of us got a bunch of pumpkins and, yes. and squash. They all came to my house, and then we divvied them out. You took some home. I think you ended up with more than I, me. Then. Yeah, I have most of them here. <laughs> um, I thought we'd talk a little bit about pumpkins and processing them. But I thought maybe we'd go over some fun facts about pumpkins yes. and some some interesting little tidbits, tidbits you and, found. Yeah, I'm yes, interested to see yes, what so you found. This is what I found, and I was on um, the University of Minnesota edu and itsybitsyfun.com. and this is where I found my my facts. Pumpkins are um, believed to originated in North America 9,000 years ago. They said they found seeds in Mexico that date back to 7,000 to 5,550 BC and that pumpkins and squash were a staple in in Native Americans cuisine. Okay. That was a very important thing and you know they grew it with the three sisters you know where the method corn, yep. yep and the corn beans. pumpkin and beans, beans I believe yeah. yeah the beans go up pumpkins could grow, um, out. grow out and keep down the weeds and use and you use the corn as the, your trellis, trellis yeah. for your beans. Pumpkins are 90% water. Oh, did not know that. I didn't know that either. I thought that was interesting. And I'll talk about a little bit that later when we talk about the freeze dryer and freeze drying pumpkin. Every single part of the pumpkin is edible. That I read. Yep. The, the skin, the leaves, the flowers, the pulp, the seed, all of that is, they said the stem, stem is edible too. I don't know no, if I would do that. You'd have to boil that yeah, a lot. I mean, I do know that the, that like pigs and stuff will clean all that up oh, for yeah. you and cows will eat all that stuff. But I don't know if that would be something for my palate, but I do know a lot of people do deep fat fried um, pumpkin blossoms or squash I've heard blossoms. of that too. I've never done it. No. But they, they do do that. I see recipes all the time about it. I thought that was interesting that you, the yeah. whole thing is edible. I would not have thought about the stem and stuff. Yeah. Um, pumpkins are also low in energy densities. That So that makes pumpkins an excellent source of potassium, vitamin A, and beta carotene, which is the antioxidant that makes everything orange. Yeah, it's good for your eyesight. Yep, it's good, and um, and that's what makes beta carotene is what makes milk yellow in the summertime when cows are out on grass. Oh, um, that's what brings that's what comes out and makes your um, butter and cream or your milk and cream yellow, and that's why our butter in the summertime it's is more so yellow. much yellow compared because it's pretty pale in the it's still <laughs> yellow in the winter, but when it's you put it next to summer summer butter, it's just incredible what the difference it is. Um, Let's see. And did you know pumpkin is considered a fruit? That I it did is, read. Yes, it's it, it's. It's always funny how that that debate is. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a vegetable. It's actually a fruit. And I remember Madison when she was taking her college classes, she said that anything anything that produces a seed is a fruit. Yes. So if it produces a seed, then it is a fruit. Because I know so strawberries, raspberries. Um, tomatoes. Oranges, tomatoes, all of those are actually fruit. They are not classified as a vegetable. Oh, okay. I just yeah, interesting. very interesting. And it's it's of course considered a winter squash. Yes, yep. I, that yep. I knew. It's in the squash family. I don't know. There was a, a term, and I didn't write it down. But there's and it's also it's in the same um, grouping as cucumbers that. and something else. I can't remember what the other vegetable or f- fruit. It would be a fruit. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what it was. And then I found this interesting. Every year, the United States produces 1.5 billion pounds of pumpkin. And 80% of this crop, which is around 800 million pumpkins, are all ripe for picking in one single month of the year. And can you guess what month that would be? September. October. October. It's October. Yeah. I'm like, wow. That's yeah. a lot of pumpkins. So I wonder, did it did it say what percentage of that is made into jack o' lanterns? Or? Uh you know, if it did, I didn't write it. Down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but that's you know, I assume that's the whole gamut yeah. of anything that they're putting in a can in the grocery store yeah. to whatever. I also learned that there are forty five varieties of pumpkins. Oh, I did not know that. And they come in a wide range of colors, from white to yellow to red to 
green to blue. So like a white pumpkin, is it is the flesh still um, orange? Now, let's see. Now, somebody asked me that. We did a pumpkin post, and somebody said they planted white pumpkins, and they were wondering if they could use them. And yes, and I think she said, I think she said the flesh was orange. I've never bought no, a white pumpkin no, I and um, used it, so I honestly don't know. But yeah, she said they're supposed to make really good ones. But I did read somewhere that your blue varieties of pumpkins are your sweetest pumpkins. Really? They're your heirloom pumpkins. Oh. And they make the best pies, the best Okay, Carol, you're going to you're going to fence off some places. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking, you know, cuz I have thought about this before is like having a plot of pumpkins out here because I could always feed them to the livestock. Yes. If we had too many. That would require me to garden to a point and I'm not sure I want to do that. <laughs> But anyway, you're I right just, up there with me and dairy. It's like, like oh, yeah. um, no, I'll pay Carol to milk my cow. <laughs> but I just thought that was interesting. I mean, I yeah. knew there was a lot of varieties, but four yeah. or five varieties. That's, that's you know, and they always say that the smaller ones are sweeter. Yeah, yeah, because you gotta get your pie pumpkins and sugar pumpkins yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But I just thought that was interesting. That the it green is. ones, ones that we don't normally think. You know, when you think of pumpkins, okay. you think of an orange pumpkin. Yeah. You just do. But those those heirloom varieties are probably a better choice. For yeah, some stuff. Well, see, I'm. I'm already putting my seeds, so I'm ordering <laughs> seeds from in my gardener. I'm like going, oh, maybe I should go look at pumpkin seeds and see what I can get Carol to do. Because <laughs> well, I we'll don't see. have. We'll talk later. I don't have the space for yeah. it. We'll, we'll talk later. Uh, pumpkins grow on all continents, except for Antarctica. Dark, I saw that. And each pumpkin produces approximately 500 seeds. Oh my goodness! So, honestly, I was cutting up my my sugar pumpkin or these pie pumpkins, these little pumpkins. Yeah. And I was like, man, there's a lot of seeds in these things. And then I read this and I was like, so oh, is okay. there 500 seeds in every pumpkin? So, you know, you get a big pumpkin and there's a lot of hollow in there when you, yeah. when you gut them, yeah, there was. you know, or whatever. And I'm wondering, I'm like, so a pie pumpkin. Does it have the same amount of seeds? the same amount of seeds? I'm not going to count them, Carol. No, I'm not going to either. <laughs> but I thought, I was like, this little pumpkin, and oh, there's just seeds and seeds and seeds. Yeah. <laughs> They, so I cut two little ones this morning to process, mm-hmm. and I got like a little Pyrex rectangle mm-hmm. Pyrex full. Oh, yep, I know. It just I was like, wow, that's a lot of seeds. The practice of carving jack o' lanterns comes from the Irish immigrants that came to America. Oh, in their homeland, they used to use turnips or potatoes. Okay, as lanterns. Once they got here, they discovered pumpkins, and pumpkins are easier to carve. And so that's how the jack-o'-lantern came to be in America and became a pumpkin. Very interesting. Yes, I thought that was interesting. Um, and then the only other thing is that um, pumpkins, pumpkin and pumpkin seeds are actually a natural dewormer for livestock. I saw that when yep. you put that out, put the, island, uh, the outline out for today. And mm-hmm. I'm like going, really? Yep, yep. We, they, a lot of people feed them. Madison always fed them to her goats in the, in the fall. She'd ask for all the pumpkins that people you know had just sitting out carved ones and sometimes they're moldy you know you had to get them in a certain time period for for them to be safe for the goats to eat or whatever but But yeah you drive around town and you see everybody's have them Mm -hmm. sitting on their steps yep and i haven't i haven't fed them like to the cows because we they have to be certified organic and so that just really doesn't work very well unless we grow them ourselves yeah um and as you know (laughs) we don't do that (laughs) Cows love them. Horses love them. Madison's horses absolutely love them. Our pigs love them. Um, There's not much your pigs don't love. Yeah, I know the pigs like just about everything. But yes, it's a natural dewormer and you will find that um, lots of lots of your farmers will do a call out. You know, if you've got pumpkins you need to get rid of and they're not moldy. Please drop them off and we'll pick so them up. So will it dogs, dogs and cats too? Because I I but, don't know if it works in dogs and cats. Because I know they say mix pumpkin in with your dog food. Mm-hmm. I yeah, pumpkin's supposed to be really good for them, really healthy for them. But I don't know if it works as a, a dewormer. dewormer in them. I mean, I remember when Madison was little and she had a cat. Her, the cat's name was Windsor, and he used to sit at the table and carve pumpkins, and he would eat the pumpkin snot, the pumpkin the stringy nuts. stuff. Yep, the stringy. Oh man, he waited for it. He was just and he just gobbled it right down. He just absolutely loved so it. So it must be something good that they know yeah, they want. Yep, yep. So anyway, so those are my fun facts. I think there was about 11 of them there. This is interesting. Pumpkins have been around a really, really long time. Yeah. So I think we will take a break and hear from our sponsor. Family-owned PicoSupply.com brings small-town customer service to their online farm store. 
PeteCoSupply.com specializes in automatic waterers from top brands such as Miraco, Jug, Franklin, Trojan, and Ritchie, as well as other products for your operation. Find your farm supplies and automatic waterers at PeteCoSupply.com. That's P-E-T-E-C-O Supply.com. Petco Supply. And we're back. We, we talked just a little bit about seeds and how yes. pumpkins produce about 500 seeds per pumpkin. And we posted a recipe for pumpkin yes. seeds and you did that recipe. I did that recipe and the game changer, because um, you see a recipes for it all over. Mm-hmm. And most of them is just, you just clean them up, you know, wash them off and then put them in oil and seasonings and bake them. This one had you boil them in salt water. See, we always soaked ours. Well, I've done but, so, but, but they, I never cooked them first. Yeah. This, okay. Um, did I write down? Yeah. You simmered them for 10 minutes and then you drained them and then you patted them dry before you went on to put oil on them and your seasoning and then you baked them. Um, I want to say 325, 350. And it could take anywhere from, you know, depending on how many, so how thick you have them. And. And then you, you stir them every 10, 15 minutes because mm-hmm. you want them to brown. And so you'd stir them every 10, 15 minutes to, to keep them moving and stuff. And most of them takes, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how many you have on your tray. And what did you use for an oil? Just olive oil. You used olive oil. Okay. But you I brought them over. They were really yeah, good. They were yeah. very tasty. Yes. Because once the, the boiling it, because, you know, the outside skin um, shell is kind of like hard. You can't really, really don't eat it. And mm-hmm. they're kind of putsy to sit in. They're like sunflower seeds. Mm-hmm. You only do them every now and then. <laughs> but these, because you boiled the seeds, you could eat the seeds. You'd end up with little pieces in your mouth that, mm-hmm. you know, I'd fish out. But but otherwise, they were really good. Yep, they were really good. That was a really good recipe. And it's posted up on our Facebook page and also on our website, which is twogalshomesteading.com. Um, yeah. of how to do that yeah, but it so sounds pretty simple yeah i um, mean you just had to separate all the stringy stuff and that's you know you do that in a bowl of water and then you just just strain them mm-hmm. and you know and then i figure if there's any little left there it's going to cook on anyway and, and uh, pumpkin seeds have some value too as far as nutritionally the, nutritionally yeah because i didn't write that down yeah i don't remember either what it is um but i know that they're supposed to be really good for you yeah let's move on to actually preserving pumpkin yeah um, now we had gotten a, like a tote and a half of pumpkins and they were all the small pie yeah, pie, pie size pie, pie size type pumpkins really pumpkin is pretty easy it is it really is pretty easy to do now for me i of course wash them i yeah. cut them in half gut them and then i baked them i put them in the oven and roasted them for about 45 minutes on 400 um, and that worked for these, but I also read um, Prairie Homestead, Jill Winger's site, and she actually does it where she puts the whole pumpkin in the oven, just the whole pumpkin. Oh. She washes it and puts it in the oven, and I don't remember how long she cooked it, whatever, whatnot, and then she cuts it in half afterwards and guts it and everything, and she says the seeds are not cooked. Oh, so, so you, you can, can still, still do the seeds. Them. And she said the... Um, the the guts or the stringy, stringy. The, the the innards come out much easier when your pumpkin is already cooked. I thought that was interesting. She says it kind of falls right out of the shell, which when I roast it, cut in half, half the time I pick the shell off and my pumpkin's sitting on my yeah. cookie sheet because it's all come out, Yes, you know, or whatever. So, But I just thought, oh, you can cook it whole. Well, isn't that interesting? <laughs> I wonder if she poked it so it wouldn't explode, I would think, like a potato. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, I just glanced at it i was like oh that's interesting because she's like if you don't want to you know have to to uh, cut them you know because she talked about how hard sometimes the cutting a pumpkin is yeah and it is it can be very hard the ones i did this morning was like i had to put a little muscle yep and she's like i don't want to go to the er and be bleeding you know or whatever type thing and that would make it easier to yeah um if it's already cooked so now it makes me think because i did mine in the instant yes i was just going to talk about that you did yours in the instant pot now you you cut yours i cut mine in half because didn't think about doing it whole, but now it's like, hmm, I'm going home tonight, putting one in there whole. <laughs> I'm just going to poke See, it. And I've read that you can do that with squash too, like butternut yeah. squash or acorn squash that you can put in the oven whole. And mm-hmm. all the recipes I've seen, you oil the outside of the oh, okay. of the squash first. In the oven. And then you put it in the oven. I wonder what that is. I don't know what that, what the purpose, um, of, purpose the oil. of that is. 
I don't know. I've seen I've seen people do it in the Instapot where they put the whole pumpkin in a hole. Yeah, you'd have to break off the stem. Yeah. Now, your pictures of your prep work when you were prepping for putting it in the Instapot, I saw your picture and I saw a canning lid in there. Is that yes. what you use for a scraper? Yes, I'd seen this <gasps> on a TikTok yesterday. How smart is that? And I'm like going, no way. That's just fluke. But this is a gal that I, she's a, she's a homesteader out in Oregon. And she had put this up and she'd said, she'd said where she'd seen it, but I don't remember now. Anyway, and I thought, no way. And so that is, it, it worked. Um, and the only thing I did know that after doing one pumpkin, the, the rubber gasket where I had been scraping it peeled off. Okay. And it was not a four jar lid. <laughs> it was a different brand. And so, but I thought, well, but, I'm just going to scrape it. I mean, I have hundreds of them. What a good use for a, a discarded could, lid, though. Yes. You know, in one that you've, you're have you not going to reuse. Yeah, you um, really don't care. Yeah, I mean, all I, care. Yeah. I use those for vacuum sealing jars. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, whatever. You know, like I say, I have a bag of probably hundreds mm-hmm. of used lids. Mm-hmm. So to, you know. But yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I hear I'm with my spoon. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's part, genius. Part of me is like, okay, it's sharper. The edge is sharper mm-hmm. than a spoon. And part of me is like, okay, was it any, I don't know if it was any quicker, but it was able to scoop in there a little bit easier. So okay. I just thought, I saw that and that's, I purposely left that in that picture. Look at that. Lid is multitasking. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, but, um, and it was only 10 minutes. I couldn't remember how long she said, because that's where I'd heard about doing an instant mm-hmm. And I went, hmm. But I did 10 minutes. And I mean, you want to talk about fall apart. I could not really pick that out. I tried to use tons to pick it out. Okay. No, they were just like mush. So I put them in a Tupperware container and put it in the refrigerator to cool. So maybe I could scoop it out a little easier <laughs> because I was getting pieces of the shell inside. But then oh, you're okay. saying that they're edible. So it's like... <laughs> Would we notice them in our pie? <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, I don't, especially if you pressure cooked it. Yeah. It doesn't dry out, you know, like in the oven, it kind of gets hard. Yeah. You know, um, so, so interesting. So, interesting. so I actually, I thought, I wonder if I did five minutes, would I get the same result? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So did, did, you, did you do natural release or um, did you? I did natural release for a little bit and then I let it go okay. because I needed some of that for lunch today okay all right okay um so that's so now we've got our pumpkin it's all cooked and ready to be put up process or uh, process yeah preserved preserved freezing is an option which is easy yep which is easy in fact um we posted about it and somebody said that um she actually weighs it oh and then she puts it in little mini bread pans and so she's just got all these nice little cubes Yes. Of in you know one cup or two cup whatever yeah. whatever um, increments increments that she uses or whatever and it stacks really nice. And I thought, well, that's pretty smart because usually I just put it in a Ziploc bag. Yeah. Um, or um, we can also vacuum seal it, you know, and get it flat or whatever. But I had done mine. Um, I had done my squash and I had flattened it out just in case I decided to want to run it through the freeze dryer. Um, and so I have it frozen. I didn't add anything to it. It's just straight up. Okay. That's that's straight up um, squash. Oh, okay. um, I haven't. I've only froze one package of um, pumpkin because the other package I used for those pumpkin bars that are oh, sitting over, over there. there. It's like oh, <laughs> um, and then the rest of it I I put through the freeze dryer, and so that was a new process. I've yeah. not freeze dried pumpkin or squash before, and so um, how long did it take? Well, guesstimate. So we put it in the harvest right. I started it. I wanted to start it on Tuesday morning. And I forgot. Oh. And I didn't remember until after Rich left in the evening. So it was like maybe 7.30, 8 o'clock when I realized I hadn't put it into the freeze dryer. Tuesday night or Wednesday night? Tuesday night. Okay. Tuesday night. So I put it in there and I did, I adjusted the harvest right to 20 below because they say sometimes with things that are watery, more watery, have oh, more okay. moisture in them. And I learned that pumpkins have 90% <laughs> water in them. Yeah. And so I, I made sure that that temperature dropped to 20, 20 below. Rich said it finished, it went into the um, drying cycle about 11 o'clock last night. Oh, so 24 um, so, it went, so it took about, yeah, it took about, I suppose, 30 hours maybe, maybe um, 28, something like that. But I was already in bed to deal with that. So he reset the, the freeze extra- dryer to yeah. leave it in that drying mode. And so we reset it, and I finally processed it this morning. Oh, okay. 
Um, and that is that is an option so that if it finishes and nobody's home or whatever, and you know you're not going to be able to deal with it, you can set your freeze dryer. Because you, you don't want it to shut off. Yeah, you don't want it to shut off and you don't want it to sit in there too long because it warms up your trays. And then you get a false reading as to if everything is dry like it's because supposed it's to be. Because it's full of ice. All that yep. water that was yep. in it is, yep. is iced in yep. your chamber and it will melt and your... Yep. Yep. Whatever so, food is there so, will absorb yeah, that. Right. So you don't want you don't want that to happen. And so he adjusted it. And then when I got up this morning for milking, then I readjusted again because I'm like, I don't have time to deal with it I gotta go before milk. milking cows. And so then we readjusted. So it actually, they were probably in there for close to 38 hours just because of we had to adjust that yeah. drying time. Yeah. Um, and normally I would put this through my Vitamix, but um, I made the mistake of... Um, not drying out my Vitamix when I washed it, and there was a little bit of water standing in it, and there's no way I was going to put this into um, a wet vessel because yeah. that would defeat the purpose of me freeze-drying this. <laughs> so I just put it in a Ziploc bag, and I rolled it with a rolling pin. And so it's not real fine powder, but it doesn't matter. I don't think it needs to be. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I could have left it in chunks too. My main purpose for this is most likely to use it in Chastity's food. Okay. And she's tube fed. This, I'll just reconstitute it into a liquid, yeah. and so it doesn't really matter. So, but I would be very curious to see how it does in a pie. Yes, I would be too. I'm just not sure. <laughs> I'm gutsy enough to try it. I want to, I, I have, I, the, I got, what, three, three pints, and then I've got a partial pint. Oh, okay. Um, and then I've, and then I did, I, we also did squash Yeah. and this, I can tell you was much drier. Oh, okay. It powdered much better than the pumpkin. And I don't know if the pumpkin is just more dense than this, the squash, but it was different. It even felt different when I was breaking it up. It just felt different, okay. but I'll see, I'll probably start reconstituting it for chastity and see how that works. Cause I'd be like interested. Okay. You and, got X about, you know, how much dry does it yep. take to make? You know, See, and it, I didn't weigh my trays. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, That's I don't kinda, weigh my trays. It's kind of so, putsy for me. Yeah, and so I I don't know how much to get it to a certain consistency, and that might be important in a pie. Most pie recipes uses a 15-ounce can. Mm-hmm. So what, how much of that? So that's roughly two cups. Two cups, yeah. So what, I mean, so that's two cups you have dry there. So would a half of that with water be two cups? I don't know. Because it, it was three pie pumpkins per tray. That's what I got. That's a lot of pumpkins. Yes, that's a lot of pumpkins on. Um, but yes, crust. that that's about that's about what I got. I got one tray was about three pumpkins. And so that's so three pies per tray. Yeah. So is it one tray per jar? Almost. It, it actually was more than that because I have a partial. I have one that oh. uh, a pint. It's just a little over half full. Um, of of extra that um, Rich is going to be vacuum. These aren't vacuum sealed yet. Jim. Oh, He'll be doing that after um, we record. I just wanted to see how yeah. that would work, and I should send some home with you so you can try it in your lattes. Oh yes. So I'll see. Send normally, them. I make the pumpkins and freeze them in ice cube trays, and then oh, I'd go home and make a latte. <laughs> I'd make a decaf <laughs> I have to, one. I have this to time send some home with you, and so you can try that and see how that works for you. But because yeah, one thing you end up with when you use real pumpkins in a latte. You do end up with pumpkin on the bottom of your cup that you mm -hmm. have yeah, to keep would, stirring in. Yep. I would think that this would dissolve. Yeah, I would it think. Should. It. Anyway, so, so that was my freeze drying experience. Okay, yeah. And so, yeah, I would plan on about 30 some hours if you've pre-froze. Because yep. I've pre-froze my trays in our harvest rate. That's the freeze dryer I have over here. It worked out really well to freeze dry. Now we'll see how we can use it. Um, yeah. And, I can see it working really well with Chaz's food. Yes. Yep. It should work really, really well for that. And that's where I'll start testing and then I'll kind of get a feel for the consistency. How, how much it takes. Yeah, stuff. how much it takes and figure that out. Because normally what would you feed her? How much would you feed her of a cooked pumpkin? I would feed her one cup for one of her feedings along with several other things. Yeah. Um, but she gets one cup of vegetables or fruit with okay. her with her feedings. And yeah, so, I'll be interested. Yeah, to so hear. when I usually use a can of pumpkin, which gives her two meals. You know, yeah. It's split between two because I usually... I you usually, prep. I prep for two days for her. So so we'll see. Okay. Now, we, we talked about dehydrating off air, but yes. I don't think you got to no, I didn't trying get to dehydrating them. So I don't know. But I saw a recipe today when I was um, just like, okay, is there anything else I'm missing? Then I kind of mm -hmm. go back and do a little more research. And I did see, I did find one recipe where they made a pumpkin jerky. And he had uh, dehydrated it at 
I want to say 135 for eight hours, I think he said. Okay. And, you know, roll it up. He he broke it in chunks and ate it like jerky. Okay. So did he put any like cinnamon yes, on it? Yes. Or, he, okay. He made a kind of like a pie, but he put like... Um, so he seasoned it like you would yeah, pie. Yes. Okay. You know, cinnamon, nutmeg, yeah. cloves. Oh, um, well, that sounds kind of Maybe sugar. Maybe so sweet. Yeah. Bit. I'd put a little maple syrup on it or something. Mm-hmm. Like, um, cause I will eat squash, just squash, you know, a little butter, salt, pepper, and a little cinnamon. And mm-hmm. that'll be my side. My husband rolls his eyes at me. I know. Rich doesn't like squash either. He likes pumpkin, but he doesn't like squash. Oh, so I'll, I'll get all the squash to myself. It's yep. all mine. Yep. It's all mine too. Yep, all uh, mine. Unless it's in a pie and then I got to share. <laughs> um, okay. And then the other thing is canning pumpkin. Now, that question did come up on our Facebook yes. page. Somebody had, did ask me. That is a big debate out yep. there in the canning if, world. If you could can mashed or cooked pumpkin. and The my, USDA yep. says no. No. Yep. They say it doesn't get warm enough in the center to yep. kill your botulism or all those bugs that you don't want to yeah. have in your food. Now, now, we had talked about canningdiva.com. Mm-hmm. That she had done some laboratory tests. Is that one of the tests that she I had done? I don't. Uh, she did it on potatoes. Potatoes. I don't know. I don't. I didn't look at her anything on squash or pumpkins or whatever. But yeah, she I had done it on potatoes. But that was on dry potato. dry canning potatoes. Yes. Now I've seen some recipes for dry canning butternut squash. Oh. Um, where they cube it raw mm-hmm. and they put it in there, put butter and then whatever, you know, sugar you want, whatever that, oh, okay. whatever you want for a sugar, be it maple syrup, brown sugar, whatever. And they say it turns out really good. But that's a dry canning once yep. again. Now I did, because they do recommend doing that with water, you know, the USDA. Does, mm-hmm. You know, so I did it last year. <laughs> you did pumpkin or squash? I did pumpkin, I think, pumpkin. last year. Okay. And, and so have I used any of it? No. And see, I've never canned either one. I've always either frozen it or used it fresh. Yeah, up until last year, but I was um, running out of freezer space. Mm-hmm. It seems to be a problem with me. Mm-hmm. My freezer's full. <laughs> I didn't put a picture of that up, but it's like that was a major Tetris jo- game. Mm-hmm. Getting that yes, all. I saw your picture. Yeah, uh, yeah. So no. for those that don't know, is I bought a... I bought a whole cow from Carol, not just a half a cow. Yeah, I bought a whole cow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She, she wasn't that big, but she was she was a good size. Yeah, she was a good size heifer. Yes, um, and so so yes, my freezer is full for the winter, uh, which is nice, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah. so I lost my thought. And we were talking about canning pumpkin, and you yeah. ran out of freezer space yes, last so, year. So, yeah, but you have not tried any no. of that. So now, did your you you canned it in cubes? I cut it, peeled it, yeah. you know, cut it open. Because when you're canning pumpkin that way, it has to be raw. You can't cook it and yeah. cut into cubes. That isn't going to work. So yeah. yeah, you do so, it raw. Yeah. So you peel it, you know, with a potato p- peeler and cut it in cubes and get as many in your jar. I did quarts because mm-hmm. I figured once you drain the water out, there'd be enough left to make pumpkin pie. And I still had canned pumpkin on my shelf. So I never used it last year for Christmas or Thanksgiving, you know, so I, I will do it because I have to. I'm making pie this year, so so I'll drain it and maybe Let's report see. back. Yes, because somebody said that once you, because you pressure canned it. Yes, I pressure um, canned it. And they say that it almost prays itself. I, yeah, I have a feeling it will, once I drain the water out of it, that it will just mush, mm-hmm. which is what, what you want when you're doing a pie. Right. Because uh, the first, I mean, we're talking many, many years ago, the first time I ever cooked a pumpkin and made pie with it, I didn't get it. <laughs> Our pumpkin pie was kind of stringy. My <laughs> husband goes, I don't think you need to do that again. <laughs> well, that was nice of him just to say that. That's what his dad would always say to his mom. If his mom cooked something and he was not impressed with it, he goes, well, I don't think we need to have that again. <laughs> and so he's kind of picked that up. And I'm like going, oh, that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's a polite way to say it. Yes. Um, so I guess our advice is on, you know, whether or not you want to can. Neither one of us has experience with no. canning the mashed pumpkin. Yeah. In the mashed I pumpkin. see. I, I see on the rebel groups that they yep. do it. That's that's I, what I told this gal. I said it is. It depends on how much of a rebel you really yep. are. Um, yep. And I am, you know, I to do the dry canning of the potatoes. I can see that, and but I, you know, it's like eh, I'm a rebel to in an extent, but not a total rebel. Yeah, I I don't want to go through all that work just to have something that. Yeah, that's where you, you see you can't eat or makes you sick or something like that. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, that's like I see that's so hard canning 
che- cream cheese. We're like, mm, I or c- canning butter too. Yep. Well, I don't know why you just went make ghee, but yeah, to me, it's just as much work. Yes, and it's and, and that's shelf stable too. Yeah. You know, so I I don't know, but. Um, I guess it just depends on how much of rebel you yep. are and what chances you want to take. I mean, they say in Europe they don't do any pressure canning. Yeah. So I have no idea, but yeah, uh, I don't know. I just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I don't know. I'm I'll some, stick to freeze dry. <laughs> I, I'm kind of a rebel, but not a total rebel. Yes, that's that's me too. I have, I have some things I'll do and some things I just won't. Yeah, the potatoes I will do, but. Yeah. And I could see doing squash. Um, in cubes, mm-hmm. peel them and not, mm-hmm. uh, I might try that. Yep. I know. I just that to, too. yeah, just because I can see that's going to get warm enough in the middle. Right. Yeah. Cause you got cubes. Yeah. You know, um, but then they say that, you know, they don't, there's no water circulating inside there, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Do what your kitchen, your rules. Yes. yes. Whatever um, you feel comfortable yep. with. And so, yeah, that's, that's all up to you what you want to deem safe in your kitchen. Yes. And that's probably about all you can do for preserving. I can't think of another method. No. But then we talked a little bit about using pumpkin. And like I said, it'll be interesting to see how the freeze-dried pumpkin works. But most of the time, I like I do like that gal did. I, I freeze my pumpkin in either one cup or two cups. You yes. Know, I my, have... pumpkin, my pumpkin bar recipe takes two cups of pumpkin. And so that's what yep. I freeze it in in a batch like that. No, I did because I was looking for recipes. So I just you know, Googled, you know, pumpkin recipes. And of course, all recipe comes up. And so I... um, It's a great site. I know. (laughs) I get so many good recipes Mm -hmm. on there. But um, the one that got me was chili. Is that what you made for lunch today? I made chili for lunch. Okay. And it just called for... No, it called for a cup of pumpkin. And then it had pumpkin pie spice in it too. And I did not tell my husband what I did. (laughs) And, he and it's always better not to. to yeah. Yes. And as far as I know, he doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> and so, but you could taste that it was different. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we don't like chili powder. And so I used cayenne pepper. Mm-hmm. And I thought about bringing some out here, but it had a little kick to it. Mm-hmm. And I know you don't like a kick. Yeah, especially now. No, I, yeah. I can't and then Rich that. doesn't like beans and it had lots of beans on except it. in chili. But it had lots of beans. Okay. I mean, you couldn't get a spoonful without beans. Yeah. So, you know. Rich will eat the beans, but like, but like Madison, she picked all the beans out. Oh, yeah, you know, she would have been a busy. pile of beans on this. So yeah, and, and there's a piece of tomato she picked. Oh, out. she would have been busy with this <laughs> soup because. So okay, so wait, was it a basic chili recipe with pumpkin added into it? Is that basically what it yes, was? Yes, and of course, um, it's like I'm going through this. So I'm like looking at this, going, no, where is it here? Because I brought it with me. Um, I thought I brought it with me. There. Yeah, I there see. it is. Oh, here it is. Because it wanted to make an okay, it had like two different types of tomato sauce. Plain tomato sauce, and then one with, with chili, or no, one one with onions and garlics. I'm like going, okay, no, I have plain, and actually I have tomato paste that I need to use up because I canned it three years ago, and it's mm-hmm. why that I'm just gonna put that in there. <laughs> this is the type of cook I am. It's like we'll just put that mm-hmm. in and adds water. That's yeah. tomato sauce. Yeah, and then it called for diced tomatoes. Well, I don't can diced tomatoes, but I had a can of diced. Tomatoes. Okay, yeah. So so between the tomato, that that's how it flied, and then I don't like chili powder. And so I put more cayenne pepper in it. <laughs> hey, you do what works. Yeah, but otherwise, you. besides those few substitutions, I followed the recipe and it's spicy punky, pumpkin chili on all recipes. And I liked it. Okay. So did it use beef or did it use pork? Uh, it used beef. It used beef. Okay. Yep. A pound of beef. Okay. Oh, good. Then you got some more beef out of your freezer. <laughs> <laughs> my son and I go, and my son was out and I go, come here. Oh, there's our timer. There's our oh, timer. Okay, oh. well, we'll keep on. Okay, so that, and then the other one I saw that was funny was pasta. It was sauce. I haven't made this one yet. It was pasta with pumpkin and cream sauce. Oh, that sounds good. It sounds good. And yeah. so my husband will not eat it, but I will make it for myself. And oh, have, I wonder if really I can good. freeze it, you know, because yeah. it won't make, my son may try it because <laughs> mm-hmm. he likes pasta, but Bob's not a big pasta guy. Okay. So this one, that will be my next one. It's like, We'll try that. Oh, you found some interesting recipes because like... I'm trying to think how much pumpkin is in this one. Can I scan it quick? Oh, this has got a cup and a half of pumpkin in it. Okay. You know, I do... I make cinnamon rolls with pumpkin in it. Oh. Those are really good. And that takes... I think it's only a half a cup of pumpkin that goes into that and makes 12 cinnamon rolls. Those are really good. And then if you put a maple... Glaze um, on it? Glaze on it. Maple icing... That's, mm. Those are really, really good. Well, your pumpkin bars are. My pumpkin bars are really, really good. And that's an old recipe. I actually put
put up a picture on my recipe site of the recipe and you really can't hardly read it anymore. I have it memorized, but, oh. but yeah, it's, it's a recipe I got, oh, probably when I was back in high school and oh. I've changed it. I've, I made one change to it. And the only change I changed, the only thing I changed was I took away the oil and, and put, put in an applesauce. applesauce, which I do with most of my recipes. Yep. I substitute applesauce for any oil, oil, not butter, <laughs> oil. <laughs> I mean, and that, that was back in the day when, you know, fat free was a big mm-hmm. thing, but mm-hmm. it, it changes the texture of the bar too. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I mean, think, it was moist. Yeah. It, it's all, I think it's always really moist when you add the applesauce apple sauce. and it's, it's a nice, you know, you need to use unsweetened applesauce. Um, otherwise they get too sweet. Oh yeah. But, Cause um, with your cream frosting, is yep, it cream? It's cream cheese frosting on there. Oh. And then there's, there's a cup and three quarters of sugar in there too. Yeah. You know, so I yeah. mean, the little piece I had last Friday was plenty. Yeah, uh, but yeah, they go pretty fast here, and it's only Rich and I right now. And <laughs> Madison doesn't like pumpkin, so it was even when she was home, it was just Rich and I eating. Those pumpkin I know that bars. thing. I'm sure, <laughs> Bob. That would be one of the things Bob I'm going. If I'm going to eat sugar, I'm going to eat sugar. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I thought I did see um, we had posted about um, substitutions and oh. using banana in place of some sugar, and I was wondering if banana would taste good in the pumpkin bars oh, to I replace could. a bit of that sugar. Yes. I was wondering how that would work. Uh, my that. thing is like, how could you do that with a frosting? Because that's a lot of frosting, or a lot of sugar in the frosting. Yes, yes, there's a lot of sugar in the frosting. Um, was just thought, but... Um, Our constant thing is, how can we modify these? Yes, things? yes. Have you ever made pumpkin butter? No. I haven't either. That no, was I think thing I, I saw somebody who's making pumpkin butter, but I, I guess I must be too much of a traditionalist for pumpkin butter apple butter i've made pear butter i've made but i could see it i mean yeah. if you, you're kind of think because pumpkin is really dry how would you what did they add to it i honestly don't know i, I could see them yes you up. would have to add some spices mm-hmm. you'd have to add um something because it's kind of dry even though they have a lot of water in them it seems kind of dry when you bring it out of the oven mm-hmm. i don't know if i could see it as a butter but i've heard of it yep i've heard of it too um so anyway because you can use them in pancakes and yes. muffins and bread and i mean pumpkin can be utilized that and look at all the stuff you found just yeah in a, oh like and that's a main just, meal type thing yeah and this yeah. is just a, just a first four or so that i found on the mm-hmm. came that, up on the search that, yeah that interests you so um but that is probably about it we yeah. ran out of time and so um, I think we'll probably close and hopefully we'll get a few more pumpkin. We'll probably put some pumpkin recipes up on our yes. website and on the on the Facebook page. We'd like to give a special thank you to PicoSupply.com for sponsoring our podcast. So until next time. Okay. Put some kefir on it. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Homestead Podcast's latest episode. Your hosts, Carol Radke and Jamie Kappis, are two gals homesteading. To learn more, go to twogalshomesteading.com or the Two Gals Homesteading Facebook page at facebook.com slash twogalshomesteading. Editing, audio production, and marketing of the Homestead Podcast is the responsibility of Media Trends X. The Homestead Podcast is an audio product of Media Trends X, a limited liability company, based in Minnesota, USA.